Inequality prevents people from reaching their fullest potential. That's why we invited three experts seeking to create a more equitable society, where everyone, no matter who they are, can live in peace and harmony. They are Leah Gollage, an entrepreneur and startup founder who seeks to empower women through careers in technology, Radhika Ragupathi, a safety specialist who highlights methods to deal with gender inequality, and Kushbu Mehta, who is building a thriving community that inspires and empowers women. After their presentations, they kindly took questions from the audience. Before we start the Q&A session, I'd like to thank our speakers again for sharing their valuable knowledge and experience with us. And as I always say, with step by step and drop by drop, we'll certainly make big change for our thrivable future. Uh, so now we move on to the first question. Uh, it's actually a general question, which is open to all our speakers. And you can anybody can take the center to answer first. Um, because our speakers are from India and Indonesia, um, uh, just talking about India and Indonesia, these countries have similar characteristics and demographics to some extent. And the stats show that a large number of women are engaged in agriculture. Uh, and they're quite vulnerable in that sense. So learning from your life and work experiences, what best can be done for them to empower them? Thank you. Anybody can take the center stage. Um, maybe I can. Yes, um, please. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Karan. So, no, it's a wonderful question, firstly, for asking that. Um, so I come from Delhi, which is the capital of India. So though I lived all my uh, all my life in, in the urban area itself, but I wouldn't deny the fact that I'm not aware of, you know, what happened in the rural areas, especially because, of course, the agriculture has been practiced in the rural areas. So drawing from my own personal experience and the conversation that I had and the research-based articles that there, I have done in the space of gender equality, I think we need to start, uh, firstly, I think, build that awareness that, you know, among, like, we can start at the grassroots level. So firstly, so for example, like, maybe we can, you know, start, for example, I love, like, how Leah has done that, the, the, the digital skills. So I think because in the current arena, uh, everybody loves to be financially independent. So I think we can start with the importance of digital skills, which, you know, maybe we can create some pamphlets, some sort of awareness that, and sharing some success stories. So this is something that, you know, we can talk to the parents itself and, you know, co start collaborating with the uh, with the foundation itself, which are focusing at the gra grass level, because there are a lot of NGOs uh, from Tata Group and everything. One, so I think it's important that, you know, we start collaborating with different NGOs who are supporting at the grass level, who are focusing on the women aspect as well. So I think those are the conversations we can do it and then started providing them uh, the digital skills itself, itself. Because I think in current arena, it's very important that every woman needs to be financially independent or needs to have enough resources to live, to live the life the way she wanted to be. So I think that's something that, you know, I feel that, you know, one of those possibilities we can look at around here. Yeah, uh, I can I can add to that from Indonesia's perspective. Uh, yeah, I I live in I used to live in Jakarta and then Bali and then during the pandemic, of course, in Bali uh, it was very difficult, right, for the community there because they lost a lot of jobs and a lot of them go to uh, go back to agriculture. I guess the first step to basically encourage more women in agriculture to embrace technology is. Uh, uh, of course, giving them digital skills, but also meet where they are, right? Uh, what that means is, you know, sometimes when we give digital skills, we uh, we need them to have a laptop. But then if what they're comfortable with is studying from their mobile phone, for example, right, we start from there. Or um, if uh, we can also select a community uh, so every village in Indonesia has a community leader. We can talk to the community leader and then she will be the one that, you know, that uh, help us basically in communicating uh, our, our movement or our programs to, to, the, to the women yeah, in the rural area. Yeah, I guess those are some practical uh, uh, examples that I can give you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Radhika, would you like to say something? 
both have both of the speakers have already covered there is uh, uh, nothing much more but i would like to add one minimum point here uh, yeah. there is a huge gap in between uh, when we sell the agricultural products uh, what uh, the person who is a middleman earns a lot specifically then person or an individual or the women who is there you know working in the agriculture if we can reduce the price in the middleman and increase the base cost of what uh, people women specifically they earn in agriculture i think it will be a very good stand of point which will increase their uh, you know financial stability in 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 many ways so and giving subsidized rates from the government there are actually many policies given by the indian government uh, to increase the agriculture the problem what i see generally is that uh, it does not reach to the end if we can increase the ways of communication mobile technologies as i told uh, as you know during my presentation earlier make awareness and uh, giving um, more access to people and reaching to the end it will for sure increase the both economic and uh, you know financial stability of women who are aware about this and they take advantage of these uh, policies given by the government so awareness uh, is the key i i, I feel yeah thank you uh, thank you for sharing those views um, on this on this topic it's very important uh, one of the key um, strengths can be making them financially independent and that will obviously help them to become empowered um so now i'll be asking specific questions to our speakers uh, first question is for leah um uh, because you've talked about your ventures uh, in during your presentation how do you um, help out girls or women with low literacy uh, or who want to learn and do something but have not been through any formal education how do you help them yeah um so right now so for example right now when we are doing a lot of our programs um girls in tech indonesia programs run by volunteers right and we probably have um no, more than 10 volunteers and then uh each of them uh we give them uh educations uh about how to run programs like like girls in tech indonesia programs and uh, they on uh, our volunteers come from different background and also different communities. Uh, they are uh, for me. They are the one that can help uh, in terms of uh, uh, spreading our impact uh, better, right? So uh, right now we are focusing on the the fresh graduates and also first jobber. But then they're coming from different cities, different islands from Indonesia, different village. So they their influence, I think, um, yeah, can can uh, can help to 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 basically uh, help to to uh, get our uh, the things that we already taught, teach them, and then they can bring it back basically to their uh, their homeland, home home village, and everything, right? So. Uh, in terms of like a very big scale of, of what we can do about it uh, right now, uh, we don't have that answer yet. So, um, so because we we just focusing on uh, to the uh, to the demographic that we know uh, better for now, right? Of course, uh, with with our movement, uh, we uh, the government already hear that, right? And then. Uh, hopefully, we inspire them to to do more, to to the demographic that you mentioned. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for that answer. Uh, my next question is for Radhika. Um, because you talked about social inequalities, what are the specific challenges at the education level, which, when solved, can help improve this social inequality? You're free to share any ex experience or example from um, from your uh, life experiences. Yeah, sure. <clears throat> uh, in India, we have a lot of uh, different boards of education. Yeah. So one board of education is matriculation. The other is uh, CBSC and the other is NCRT. And there is a fourth group, which is called sometimes the elite global education and Montessori. Now, what happens is that uh, each state has its own uh, board of education. Each state has its own curriculum. 
and mostly what i feel is taught in this particular board uh, our education system is improving but still i find a lot of gaps in making the students think what our current education board is doing is that it is teaching them what are the facts and ask them to replicate the same in the exam they test only the memory of the children but if at all we change the curriculum in such a way that the highest form of iq is creativity if we are able to have a touch point on that particular area where education system not only improves your knowledge and iq it improves your creativity part we can have a lots and lots of changes in the education system and maybe somewhere down the line if we are able to stabilize the quality of education regardless of all the schools which is present in india to in a very single or in a very good fashion where you are encouraging a lot of entrepreneurs a lot of thinkers and uh, a lot of creative uh, output where we focus only on uh, science and so on uh, there are very less schools which give um, a proper uh, window or an outlet for a child to grow in a creative way uh, less uh, uh, focus is given uh, to physical education uh, it is very important uh, as my experience what i thought is that uh, ment uh, physical education uh, the, the physical stability and the mental stability go in hand in hand so if we are able to give equal um, focus on these both and in various areas where a child's creativity is is increasing he has he or she has an outlet to improve their creative uh, you know aspects it is going to change the whole education system now currently we are generating lot of population of people specifically who are trained to do what is being said <laughs> and if we have more children who are uh, creatively uh, being you know given a creative outlet or they are uh, you know give them a spark to think about their creativity i think it will change the whole dynamic of education here that is what i feel yeah i do accept that um my third uh, question to uh, kushbu um talking about the practical steps that an organization can take to identify and deal with imposter syndrome what do you think this has to be voiced by intellectuals like you when it can naturally be a part of any hr policy your thought process um no i think karan firstly again it's a brilliant question once again so i think when we talk about that we always like i think the whole presentation not just focusing on the fact that you know about the individual competence or like you know we i'm not good enough like you know or underestimating their achievements it's more about that how for example like in the business term like i think it's just that we need to find the sweet spot or maybe the synergies that are happening across the organization itself and so for example if you're talking to the business right you need to ensure that i uh, you talk in numbers like okay if you invest into this let's say wellness program it will not only enhance the employee uh, let's say mental health but it also enhance their productivity as well there will be lesser chance of burnout you know or maybe the stress that you know we usually fee feel uh, in in the in the corporate work culture so i think when we talk in their language i think they understand it better so that's how i i just perceive that so and this is where for example like you know you i think uh, it's important also to listen to them like why they're not doing that in the first place as well so i think firstly listening to them like what's holding them back as well so, and this is where for example like you know just like you know attending some events and this is something that you know a person like me would just understand that you know why it has not been considered in the first place having you know open and honest conversation which has also mentioned that um uh, in that uh, in my presentation and secondly also i think show them the value the benefits again you know in the business term i'll go into that you know and that's where like you know we can add a value here so have like you know attend those networking groups and events the sessions that you know and just uh maybe like you know you can spark some new idea or thought like you know for example today for example we have different presentations it might spark some new thoughts so that's how i see that like you know rather than pushing it you know you have to do this i think it's more about the roi as well at the same time 
and also i think bringing uh, to your attention because sometimes we feel that uh, when it comes to these conscious biases i never thought that you know i can be racist or discriminating against you know one particular gender or socio economic condition because we're just used to it that societal conditioning in that sense so i think it's a bit of reflection introspection with yourself and then talking to the right decision maker as well because they are the ones who can make those decision here so yeah. i understand that yeah um well uh, we are running short of time and this restricts me to ask any further questions to you all and i was really enjoying it i know our viewers were also enjoying it but uh, i would request um, all our speakers to answer them offline um the the remaining questions and for our viewers do sign up our newsletter to get access to these q and a and the latest updates